All right. So the public key, if sender, so Alice is encrypting, she would only ever encrypt with Bob's public key. Never should Alice have Bob's private key. Now, Alice can actually encrypt with her private key. So she would never have Bob's private key, but she should have her private key. If she has her private key, she can encrypt with it. If you encrypt with a private key, that means you must decrypt with the other key, the match TAF, which is the public key that belongs to Alice. Instead of saying encrypt, because that confuses people, we say I signed it. It's how you create a digital signature. You encrypt something with your private key. It's just like my signature. If I sign something, that's, that's my handwriting. It's a little bit jagged because of the pen and I wrote too quickly, but it is recognizable as me. So if Alice is going to sign something, she has to use something that is distinctly unique to her. And what's unique to her is her private key. But when you say encrypt, there's an automatic reaction that people have that encrypt must mean confidentiality. And that's not true here. So to reduce that confusion, you say encrypt and people think it's going to be confidential. That's confusion. So of saying that, you say, I signed something. So Alice digitally signed something. Now we know, oh, it's source. We know we can prove the source. We know that we can prove that it came from Alice. The way we prove that it came from Alice is by decrypting with her public key. If you can decrypt with Alice's public key, that means it had to have been encrypted with Alice's private key. Working on the theory, that means that it had to have come from Alice because you keep your private key to yourself. Where we run into problems in the future is that it is possible that Alice is not actually in control of her private key. That's a problem. So if private keys are ever compromised, we've, we've got problems that we need to figure out how to solve. And it could be a lot of them. So theory is where you want to answer from. Like just talking about that, my brain wants to go to, yeah, but look at all the ways this can be attacked. And Alice may not be the only one with her private key. There's all this noise in my head. But especially on exam, what you have to stick to is the question that you're asked. And if you're asking, or how do I sign or how do I prove the digital signature? Then these are the answers. Alice encrypts with her private key. Bob decrypts with her public key. Because Alice keeps her key secret, there's the theory, because Alice keeps her key secret, I know that this actually came from Alice. Got to stick to the theory, unless it's a question about an attack. <laughs> and then we can go, well, let me tell you how this goes wrong. So I said RSA and Diffie-Hellman. Do you need to know more than that? Probably not. Those are the two main ones that we really talk about. Another one that's commonly mentioned, especially in the books, is ECC, elliptical curve cryptography. It is the exception to my rule about names. Elliptical curve is obviously not somebody's surname, but elliptical curve is based on a specific curve. It's an elliptical curve. But otherwise, Diffie-Hellman, RSA, yeah, there's, those are the ones that we use still today. There's a few variations in there, but that's primarily it. So knowing algorithm names is probably a good thing. Knowing key sizes, I'm going with no. We're on the edge of maybe talking about key sizes on this test, but it's in the category of it's a number. And if you don't memorize numbers well, let it go. Generally speaking, bigger is better. General, it's not always true when you're looking at cryptography, but if you don't do numbers well, that's my, that's my suggestion. 